My name is Paul Kraus. Hi, Paul. First, okay, thanks, Charles. Thanks for, everybody just say thanks, Charles, for... It's like, they told us in college that I took this public speaking class to say, what's the Americans, what's the biggest thing you fear? Like, death was number three. I don't know what number two was, but public speaking was number one. Of those, so. <sighs> Way back in the 20th century, I don't know, some of you might have remembered that, when that was. I used to work as a daily newspaper photographer in a place called Grand Rapids, Michigan. Now... All Michiganders have a map of Lower Michigan on their hand. Michigan is surrounded by the Great Lakes, and Michigan looks like a mitten. Detroit is right here, and Grand Rapids is right here. It's, so the newspaper, we covered the, the western half of the state uh, with about 250,000 circulation newspaper. Being a newspaper photographer is actually a pretty good gig. We, I didn't have to sit in the office that much. We were out, I was out and about every day. And I got to see lots and lots of really interesting things. Some of them were good, some of them were bad. Everything from traffic accidents and murders and death and destruction to going to a cooking assignment or, you know, for the cooking page or lots of different things. One great thing about this job was that I had no idea what was gonna happen on any given day. I would just walk in at the beginning of my shift and they'd give us some pieces of paper that were our photo assignment. And usually on the sheets it would say when and where you had to be someplace. Also we had pagers, in those days we didn't have cell phones, we had pagers and we also listened to the police scanner in case something big happened. So um, every day was different. Well one Saturday I get a group of photo assignments as I walk in, I was going to do a night shift, a late shift, and one of them said fire walking. And the address is on Podunk Road. Podunk Road, where, is, where the heck is Podunk Road? Ted, Ted what does Podunk mean in, uh, what do you think of Podunk when you hear Podunk? Enoch. Enoch. So it's like a countryside, it's like this backwoods, man. He's from like some Podunk town or something. That's how Podunk is used. Anyway, uh, make a long story short, uh, I shot my assignments and I went to this place on Podunk Road at the assigned time. Now when I saw fire walking, I'm thinking, this is going to be like some circus kind of thing. There's going to be like the you know jugglers or whatever. It's going to do some fire walk. No, <laughs> when I got there, it wasn't like this. This is out on the country road. This nice house with a lot of land, and it turned out to be this like new agey seminar. Oh, 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 I lost something. So this new agey seminar on confronting your fears. It's like ah uh, okay. So I get there, and it's in a house, a nice big house, and there's a reporter there, this guy named Jim, who I didn't know very well. He's like twice my age, he's his late 40s at this time. And then I met the woman who was um, running the, the seminar. And she was a, she was a lovely woman, and uh, I found out also right away that the photographs were not going to happen, this is going to be an all-night deal, and that the photographs were not going to happen until the end. So, okay, she asked me, do you want to participate in the seminar? And I'm like, ah. I guess so I have nothing else to do for the next five hours, so okay. So after a brief introduction, we walk out into the woods <clears throat> where we're gonna, where they're gonna, we're gonna light the fire. So we go out into this, this clearing in the woods and um, it's all been set up, but there was a bunch of logs that had already been cut and everybody in the group, there was about a dozen or 15 people, we all participated in creating this like cone-like structure by putting a bunch of logs on it. It was pretty big. Then we let uh, we got in a circle around it, and the leader. So there was an assistant who was beating this American Native American drum, and, and the lady lit the fire, and they sang this little song. And okay, then we were going to went back to the house because we had to let these these this wood burn for several hours. So we go back to the house, and we have this this seminar on fears, both rational and irrational fears. I'd never actually been to something like this before. So I'm teamed up with this reporter who I don't know very well. He's like twice my age. And we're sitting here talking about our deepest, darkest fears, which is like, okay, you know, I, you just told me something I don't think you've ever told your wife before. So it's, okay, so that was, so the seminar itself was pretty good. All right, went for several hours and I learned something about it. It was actually interesting. Then at the end of the seminar, we go back out to where we had lit the fire. So we go down this, now, by now it's like 
pitch black dark out, down at the end of this country road and in this clearing. And what had been the big, big cone of logs was now this huge mound of orange red glowing coals. Okay, and so the woman, the leader, explained to us there was a bunch of tools there, like implements of destruction, you know, like uh, shovels and rakes. So we picked up the shovels and rakes. She showed us how to make this like walkway. It was probably two meters long by four or five meters long. Okay, and we had the we had the rake. So I had this rake, and I'm raking out these hot coals. And as I lean over the hot coals, I'm just blasted with this really, really intense heat. It's really, really hot. And as I'm raking out the coals, there was only one thought in my mind. And it was really clear, and it was really loud, and it was, no way, man, no, no way. It's not going to do this. No, 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 no. So that was the thought in my head. Anyway, I still, we, we, we made the little walkway, and... Everybody got in a circle around this rockway of the coals. Now, I was supposed to take photographs, so the woman came up to me. There was going to be a circle, and apparently the circle was an important thing. I didn't know. But she said, okay, you're going to be outside of the circle taking the pictures, and that's cool. But when you're done taking the pictures, if you want, you can join the circle and join in, but you don't have to. And actually, nobody had to walk across the coals if they didn't want to. So she said, you know, just be extra careful. And I'm like, all right. So I got up on a stump with my camera and my flash. And, and, uh, and the scene here is it's really, really dark and it's only lit by this really intense orange-red coals on the ground. Now, everybody was in a circle around this, around this walkway and it's, they started beating this Native American drum and everybody started singing this Native American song that she had taught us. And everybody's kind of going in a go dancing, let's get you know, walking around the circle and they start beating the drum louder and louder. And I'm sitting on the top of this stump and the thought that's going through my head is, gosh, do they have any medical supplies? Because I really don't know how this is going to work. But anyway, so I'm standing there and it gets faster and faster and, and suddenly one person steps out onto the coals. Now the first thought that I had, I thought for sure a person was going to step onto the coals and go, ah, and fall over and, you know, like burn themselves on the coals. And I was just imagining all this, this scenario of just death and destruction, like we were taught to think like as journalists. But that didn't happen. The woman kept walking across the coals. Wow. I was amazed. It's like she walked right across the coals and she didn't scream or anything. She actually looked really happy. And then the next person did it. And the next person did it. And the, the beating is getting faster and people with the energy in the group is like raised really high. Everybody's like, wow, everybody's like, they're, they're starting to dance and stuff going around the circle. I'm, I'm, I'm really amazed by this. I was really impressed. Uh, I was a really cynical reporter type in those days and it took a lot to impress me. This really impressed me. So anyway, I'm done taking my pictures and I put my camera down and I joined the circle. Now, it's really hard to explain this, but there was something going on in the circle that wasn't going on outside of the circle. Especially in those days, I didn't understand anything about it, but there was just like a power going on. And this wasn't anything logical, it was just like, whoa. So I went around the circle as they're going around, I went around once, and then it got to be my time to walk across the coals. And so I put my foot out. Now, I was like kind of reticent about this, but in the circle there was like, whatever fears that I had had, and the logical things I had seen before, it kind of disappeared. So I put my foot onto the coals, and I didn't burn myself. And it actually, it didn't feel hot. It was kind of like when you go to the beach, and you're walking on like rocks or whatever, because it's uneven surface on bare foot. It kind of hurts that way, but it's not like it's, it's not like it's burning myself, so I walked across. And as I got to the end of the walkway, there, I put my foot on the, the wet grass, I felt heat coming off of my feet, but my feet itself weren't hot. It was really bizarre. And the more important thing was, when I put my foot off the end, I was like, this huge power just went surging through my body from the ground, and I was like, ah! <laughs> and so they're beating this drum, and everybody's singing and dancing, and I'm getting, everything was like hyper clear. Everything was like, you know, time just sort of stood still. And so I get lost into the, the, the beating of the drum and the singing of the song, and I'm, ah! so I'm, 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 and everybody's like joyous at this point. And they're going around, and everybody crossed the, walked across the, the, the coals like, I don't know, 
four, five, six times. I don't know how many times I did it. I sort of lost count because I was in the moment. Okay, that's great. This is intense. This is one of the more, most interesting things I've ever done in my life. So we get done with that. And of course, we, we put out the fire. We have water there. We raked it all out. And then we had to go back to the house. And this is quite late at night, well after midnight by now. And so I was walking back down this country road and with, with the reporter and this other guy. And everybody was actually strangely quiet. We got about halfway to the house. This other guy goes, no, when I was raking out those coals, there's just like one thought in my mind. is like, no way, man, no way. Anyway, so we go back. So I go back to go back to the newspaper, process the film. Jim writes the story, and we put it. It's on the front page of the Sunday newspaper, and published the next day, that day. And great, Sunday newspapers usually thick. Long ago and far away, when there were people also bought newspapers, a thick thing, and that was you know a good spot to be. And what was good about it? In the next couple of days, we got lots of hate mail coming from, we had lots of hate mail, which we were always proud about, from, you know, it was usually, it's the, the newspaper published a few of them, I was like, you're just a bunch of, they the worst spurs doing fainting stuff out in the woods, and so we cut that, I cut it out and put it in my locker, so to show my other co-workers, because we're proud of hate mail, who got the best hate mail. <laughs> so this was an amazing experience about confronting my, because I was, it was something pretty logical, putting your foot, you know, I was actually afraid of burning the heck out of my feet. Now, years later, I actually, after moving to Japan, I, I did a fire walk again in Thailand, where I did, in fact, burn the crap out of my feet. <laughs> and I learned a big lesson, because yeah, shearing pain is really good for teaching you lessons. And that well, that's a different story for a different time, but that story is about, you know, believing charlatan, being, being caught up in a charlatan's thing, you know, believing a charlatan, and I got caught up in my own ego stuff, so universal you know, when your head gets too big. So I want to leave you with a thing, because now fears are, confronting your fears is a good thing, and Charles did a good, uh, his story was really good about that, you know, because the fear itself was not that big of a deal when you when you really look at it. Right? And, and there are certain things, if there is a, beer, a, 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 a bear coming at you in the woods, you know, you should have some fear. But I want to read some. Now that seems really stupid, but it's not. Comes from there's like this Will Smith movie out now. I, I haven't seen it. Don't know if it's any good, but they have a quote from it, which I think is really good. It says, "Fear is not real. It is the product of the thoughts that you create. Do not misunderstand me. Danger is very real, but fear is a choice." Thank you very much. Thank you.